This program is rated TVMA and is intended for mature audiences. Ladies and gentlemen, señoras y señores, welcome to the opening ceremony of the UEFA Champions League Final 2019. Probably the most exciting event going on tonight. I can't imagine of any other event that would take precedent over this one. I'm waking up. some sort of major event happening right now, which would explain why everyone in the audience is not what I would call athletic? <laughs> True! The audience does not look like a lot of sports fans, but neither does the man who roasts it. <laughs> we're gonna bring up, right now, the person we're gonna be roasting this evening, the man you're here to make fun of, and love, mostly make fun of. <laughs> Please give it up for the man of the hour, Mr. Helgi Stena. <laughs> This is a different type of thing for Helgi. He normally doesn't try and get attention at all costs. <laughs> He's not a man to over-report everything he does or exaggerate what he does in any way. This is a serious man. And this is a serious roast. I don't know if you know this about Helgi Stainer, but he's got a few uh, skeletons in his closet. Oh yeah. Big fan of the ladies, Helgi. <laughs> Feeling is not mutual. <laughs> and that's actually caused some problems for me. But we won't get into that. The big thing about having this roast tonight, this will be the first show Helgi's done where he didn't have to do it in front of a crowd that didn't know English. I don't know if you know this, but he's in the top 10 best comedians in Chernobyl. <laughs> a feat that no one wanted to do or will do again. But well, we have a lot of comedians here tonight are here to roast them. Look at, give them a round of applause, the comedians. We have to say that we're Helgi's friend. That's part of the contract, which is good and wonderful. This is a nice thing. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, I recently went to rehab. Yeah. yeah, pretty great. I thought it was the worst night of my life. <laughs> I was wrong. It's this. Because it's wonderful, because comedians are like the friends you never wanted. No, that's not true. They're like your enemies. It's like having a group of people who always want the worst for you. It's like being a stepchild to a bunch of alcoholics. And the first comedian to come up and talk about Helgi Steinar is someone who knows him very well and they're very close and she's not just here because no other woman would do this. <laughs> Please give it up for Snow Love. Thorotlin is here. I like Thorotlin, he's sweet. He's the sweetest guy, so I don't want to say anything that makes him look bad. I mean, he does that on his own, <laughs> every single night. <laughs> He's kind of like a self-roasting comedian, you know? like, kind of like a chicken in, like, wh when they turn on the stick, you know, a rotisserie chicken. How <laughs> about is the rotisserie chicken of comedians? <laughs> Joseph, I just recently uh, got to know Joseph. Um, we met just kind of a few weeks ago, like properly, and uh, I remember I, I met him, I was like, hey, how are you? Like, hey, nice to meet you, how are you? And he started talking, and then he talked some more. <laughs> <laughs> and then 37 weeks later, when he finished talking, <laughs> I was like, that was a long story. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've also, uh, he, in the quote, few weeks that I've known him, he has uh, added me on Facebook three times. <laughs> <laughs> because he keeps getting like reported or something, and, um, and so he has to make a new one. And he kind of treats Facebook like his personal diary. Uh, and he's kind of like a 12 year old. Everybody's so mean, I hate everyone. <laughs> 
like those things like, oh, I've just had the worst day, and then like no more explanations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I don't think that you're being reported or your pages are being closed. I think your Facebook pages, they just commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Mansplaining breastfeeding. <laughs> you know. He is 30 years old. <laughs> he, he, for years, he has been hanging around with Chinese businessmen. Who does that at 30? <laughs> it's, a, it's a path that he chose in life many, many years ago. At 23, it was like, yeah, I'm gonna interpret Chinese business stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do next year. Like an old man, he also. Um, likes to talk. <laughs> Him and Joe should have like a talking competition. Or something. <laughs> it would be the most uninteresting thing ever. Um, I went to China with him. Uh, we were doing gigs there, and he talked to every single person, every receptionist, every waiter, every everyone, just so that he could get the compliment. Be like, oh, you're from Iceland, but you talk Chinese so well. <laughs> The next comedian to come on stage, he's been doing comedy for years. He's a staple in the scene. He's been around for so long. I know what you think, it's Hooliger. No, it's the unsuccessful one, Thor. <laughs> yeah, I have to move to Iceland to make it, okay? <laughs> I mean, you, 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 all your, all your takes, he has like the squeaking sound, you know, uh, he has a shaking hand and everything. So he's squeaky and shaky. He's like a, 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 like a sex toy that nobody wants to buy. You know? <laughs> it's like, no, not for me, no. And now, after he came out as bisexual, uh, that's, uh, now he's being rejected by both genders. Um, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but the worst take that he has, that's the take of uh, him stealing jokes from others. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, and, and telling really long, unfunny stories on stage. Uh, uh, two rats, one a disease. Uh, you know. uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just how it is, yeah. Hey, Bjarni Gautur, Bjarni Thomas, I don't know what the fuck your name is. You have a lot of Facebook profiles as well, because you say a lot of stupid things on Facebook, <laughs> and you get banned. Uh, nice haircut, you look like my grandmother. Uh, uh, I'm actually getting kind of like turned on here. Uh, you know, uh, he's a weird guy, he, he collects old uh, VHS, uh, you know, cassettes, he travels a lot. He's actually been to North Korea, that was the second worst thing that happened to that country. Uh, <laughs> The coolest thing about Bjarne is that he, he, he kind of knows vanilla ice. <laughs> that is, that's the coolest thing about him. <laughs> that's not good, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bjarne looks like a guy who kind of like collects toenails. Uh, like, what is, and not like, like toenail clippings, like the whole toenail. <laughs> Like he puts it in a jar and people are like, how did he get like a whole toenail? And he's like, I've got my ways. You know, <laughs> with that hair, ooh, my toenails, you know. Uh, Helki is probably the loudest person I've ever met in my life. Uh, he is uh, a lot of energy and he sweats a lot and he talks a lot and he talks a lot. And uh, yeah, I've traveled with him uh, uh, also and he talks a lot and he talks a lot and sweats and, uh, and talks and talks and then he talks more, and uh, when I'm not listening to him, he actually talks to himself. Uh, yeah, yeah, he just, uh, <laughs> hey, did I tell you all about that thing? Yes, hell yeah. And he always, he shouts everything. He shouts, he shouts. It's, you, uh, we, you are really short, but we can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you. What the hell is going on, everybody? Everybody, I'm talking right now. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, oh. Give a round of applause for Thorler. Wow.
That was nice. His set was a bit like his career. Started off with energy in 2007 and then went on way too long. The next comedian coming up, what he does is something kind of miraculous, almost scientific. He actually shows the one flaw that all women have. It's true, it's true, that's what he does, every night. You can be a racist, sexist, transphobic, piece of shit, and functionally retarded, and women will still sleep with you if you're tall. Please give it up for Draper. I haven't seen these ladies. <laughs> First of all, same night as the Champions League final. Are you stupid? <laughs> Are you stupid? <laughs> Don't you have any friends to tell you to not tell this the same day as the Champions League final? <laughs> Just the biggest sporting event in the known universe? <laughs> no big deal. None of you watch fucking football. <laughs> Maybe that's why your lives are so goddamn miserable. Can't get 90 minutes of excitement each week. That would be too much. And you plant this shit three months in advance. Never before has there been such a long wait for an event that nobody gives a fuck about. <laughs> That's the only man in the world that looks more like a pitofal when he takes off his glasses. <laughs> Dan Sharon, aka the king of pity laughter. <laughs> Is the leader of my voices have to rat? With a group of comedians with brain errors? <laughs> People who go to see my voices have to rat leave thinking my, vo my choices have regrets? <laughs> solely those of the comedian and do not reflect the venue. The next comedian coming on stage is a big treat. We call him the Daniel Day-Lewis of comedy because they have both pretended to be handicapped to win an award. Please give it up to Dan Zarin.
fuck you all. <laughs> Start out by uh, kind of giving you a present, Helgi. Uh, I've been trying to. I've actually been trying to give this uh, to a, a bunch of people for their birthdays over the years. Uh, but just like just like this T-shirt, no one ha and you, no one seems to have wanted it. Oh. <laughs> uh, U.S. Yeah, I said no one ever anymore. Oh. Uh, give it up for everyone's favorite host in the city. Uh, wait, Geesley, who is it this week? Uh, I, uh, I actually once asked uh, Hudley how he co comes up with his comics, and he said cyanide and happiness. There was, there was actually a fake news story recently that uh, Thor Dollar's dad died. Dude, how annoying do you have to be to your father that he fakes his own death? I like when Graper tells a joke and it doesn't work, and he blames his notebook. Instead of going to Bjartney and complaining that the joke he wrote wasn't funny. <laughs> How do you have a you have a habit of drunkenly booking shows in countries where you where people don't normally do, think to do stand-up comedy? Maybe, maybe those countries aren't popular for stand-up comedy because you're doing comedy in them. I, don't know. I was actually once doing an interview in the green room here, and Helgi tried to weasel his way into an interview, into the interview. But then he realized I was being interviewed by Italians, and he walked away, going, "Damn it, that's actually a normal country." <laughs> All right, since I have uh, only, only one minute left, let's talk about the U the UN. I like how Hefty always talks about how he thinks that like alcohol is the reason we can all get along. He has not thought about Facebook. Um, I thought I feel like if like if, if we were just to describe all of us on Facebook, it would basically go basically Joseph would start getting too belligerent after his ninth double Jameson. <laughs> Starts going after Biatney Biat Gaither like listen Biatney, I'm sick and tired of all these bullshit comments on my Facebook posts. I don't even know how Facebook works. And Bjarni's just like, that's just because you're a snowflake. <laughs> and Snowlug is like, don't include me in this. I'm not part of this conversation because I'm better than all of you. Look, I'm just trying really hard right now to be controversial and to just make North Korea great again. <laughs> and you're just making it really hard. I mean, nobody even wants to use Facebook anymore. Isn't that right, Hugh? Hugh? Hugh, you there? Hugh? I have Facebook. No one cares, though, Dollar. <laughs> uh, I, I'd rather punch Thoad Holler in the fist than fist Thoad Holler in the punch. <laughs> Just like your comedy, it makes no sense, I know. Okay. <laughs> And Hunle is just like, I just use Facebook to post really offensive, racist, incest-filled, anti-feminist comics, and people call me a feminist. <laughs> it's actually a hell of an achievement. <laughs> okay, th this is getting a bit out of hand. Geesley, can you help us out with this conversation? No. <laughs> Why not? I'm off tonight. <laughs> Ask Agnor. Well, hey, it's, it's, it's Helgi's 30th birthday, and he's having a party at his grandmother's place. Does, does anyone have a car? Uh, oh, York, you said you had a car, right? Uh, my wife's actually got the car. Actually, she's probably going to have everything from now on. You know what? I think it's just time for us all to just go downtown. What? Go downtown? But I'm turning 30 years old! Nobody goes downtown until I get video recording of everyone having a party at my grandmother's place! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Talgy. Why are you so... Wait, video recording? Very simple. When you have video recording, it corrects the media. Talgy, <laughs> I fucking love you, brother. That was the first time Dan Zarin wrote his own jokes. <laughs> so that's great. Please give it up for Hugh Cloverdale Jones. Uh, 
see my oak boots have a hole in I had to buy some trainers, but it's okay. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Helgi's Roast. Oh my god, Gizli Johan is here. Hello, Gizli Johan, how you doing? Yeah? Gizli founded Golden Gang Comedy. You should be proud of yourself. More than 200 shows and only four se sexual harassment <laughs> scandals. <laughs> Still is here as well, hey. Uh, I'm not important enough for you to do jokes about, apparently, <laughs> but I have written some about you. Please don't be offended. Forgive me. I actually went on a date with a girl who says that Snowlick bullied her at school. I said, how does that work? She said, well, it's girl bullying, so it's the silent treatment. <laughs> so I guess Snowlick feels like uh, every time she does stand-up comedy, the crowd is bullying her. <laughs> She always says she's better than us because she grew up in France, but that's not how France works, is it? <laughs> Dan Zarin is here as well. How you doing, Dan? You good? Some people think Dan doesn't really have Tourette's. Not me, I think he doesn't really have talent. <laughs> Helgi Stainer is 30 years old this week. 30 years is almost half as long as he's been telling that UN joke. I didn't actually know today was a roast. I thought it was an intervention, so we could all... <laughs> no, because I thought we could all tell Helgi that his haircut isn't hiding the fact that he's going bald, you know? <laughs> this is legit truth, though. Uh, me and Helgi, we lived about four streets away from each other in Beijing. That's true, right? Yeah. yeah I bet Helgi actually speaks Chinese, and I just pretend. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to say one thing to you, though, before I go. That is somewhat quiet upon you Ha. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much. I don't have Thank you. Please give up for Gizli Johan. <laughs> All right. Wow. Thank you, York Underwood. You are an amazing person. And we should all aspire to be half as great as you are. As you are a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> Being invited to a comedy roast <laughs> is a dream come true for many comedians. Getting to roast someone you know you respect and admire with a lineup of, of amazing, talented comedians. And one day, I, I truly hope to be invited to such a roast. <laughs> Thorn of the Thorns are over there, next to Dan, also a member of the award-winning show, My Voices Have Tourette's. Yeah, I'm so happy you guys won those two awards in Finland. Yeah? Leave it up to the Finns to give out awards for losing the genetic lottery. <laughs> but Graper is here. Graper is here. Graper's dad, he is a world-renowned strongman. Yeah, so if you ever needed proof that steroids affect your sperm... <laughs> there he is! I mean, look at him! He looks like he can taste colors! Bjarne Goeder, you might know Bjarne Goeder, you know, from his uh, work as a film producer. <laughs> But let's be honest, you probably don't. <laughs> He's mostly worked for the, uh, the film production company Trauma. If you don't know what trauma is, it's what you experience after watching one of his films. <laughs> uh, who else? Snowlu is here. That's one of those. Snowlu talks about in her stand-up how she wishes she had an extra asshole on her heel. <laughs> What, you need another hole men don't want to fuck you with? Hulliger <laughs> Daxon is here? Yeah, he's here because Helga Steiner secretly believes that if you rub someone hard enough, some of their fame rubs the back off of you. <laughs> also, RAL Jug wasn't available. <laughs> If you don't believe me, <laughs> just ask Bill Burr who brought him his water. <laughs> Bill Burr doesn't know, but Helgi does. <laughs> and 
and so do we, because he fucking told us repeatedly on Facebook. And now, for you, oh hell, oh boy, you potato looking motherfucker. You, you look like you used to be full size, but then one day, you were leisurely walking down the street and a grand piano fell on your head. <laughs> it fell on your sorry excuse for a head and squished you into the pathetic, pathetic little stub of a man you are today. You look like a thumb with feet. <laughs> comedian who can stand on stage and still be eye level with the audience. That's amazing. And as if that isn't enough, you're so unlikable, your hair is leaving you. And you're so ugly. But if they ever make a biopic about you, and make no mistake, they won't. <laughs> if, they, if they ever make a biopic about you, Danny DeVito would be considered too handsome to play you. <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, Helgi, I love you, my friend. Happy birthday. You're my favorite comedian in the city. So without further ado, Joseph Van Sickle. Well, how do you follow that? My God. <laughs> yeah, as I've said before, like I always expect these roasts, like the comedians are gonna come at me super hurt. And all they do is say, I talk on Facebook too much. You guys can't burn me with stuff my mom tells me at Christmas every year. <laughs> it's not super effective. She's got that covered, I swear. Uh, real quick, before we get started, I want to say props to whoever set the lineup for this roast. Amazing that you were able to work this out. You have Bjartney, you have Grapier, you have no black people. How did you do that? That's insane. The backlash will be minimal to none. Uh, I did do this, though. I equated every comedian to a U.S. state. I tried to figure out what U.S. state each comedian would be. So if York were a U.S. state, he'd be Vermont, because he's white, boring, and covered in snow. <laughs> So that's York State. If Grapier were a U.S. state, he'd be Florida. He's kind of racist, and it's really hard to understand how he hasn't injured himself more often. <laughs> Geasley is here. Geasley got sober recently. Yeah, I didn't think it'd get any more boring, but here we are. <laughs> Tony, and his, Tony and his girlfriend were gonna have cats instead of kids, and on behalf of society, I wanna say, thank fucking God. <laughs> Holy shit. You're turning 30, to me you'll always look like a fresh placed 20 year old who just swallowed an entire 10 year old ginger Boy Scout troop hole. <laughs> you look like your head was shrunk in the microwave, you book shows in Asia so you can feel tall. <laughs> Whatever, that's all throwaway jokes. All right, here we go. Now this is, this is my joke for you. This is, and this is a Grapier joke in the voice of Grapier, all right? How are Grapier's audience members and Helgi's sexual partners similar? They both only have two possible reactions. Laughter or sadness. <laughs> Tell me if you were U.S. state, you'd be Wisconsin, because like most of its residents, you'll probably die before 40 from heart failure. Real classy, that guy. There's been a lot of jokes about cocaine tonight, and I find that to be, you know, a little bit sensitive of a subject. I know that people say I do a lot of it because if you look at this row of people here and it doesn't really scream, I can afford cocaine. <laughs> they, don't, they look like the type of guys who follow me into the bathroom. <laughs> Actually, the only two people here who can afford it are me and you, Joseph, but your dad had to die to get that money, so. <laughs> Don't worry, he would roll over, but he's done that already when he reads your Facebook posts. 
So I've been on a few benders in my life, I'll be honest. I've actually come and done a comedy set here after a three-day bender. What was I thinking? But the next comedian I'm coming on stage, no matter how long I go out on a bender, he still smells worse than me. It never makes any sense. And he looks the way he smells. Please give it up for Dudley Goethe. Thank you, Rachel Maddow. <laughs> it's an honor to be at the roast of Helki Steinar, or what regular people call it. What? Why? Who gives a fuck? Well, let's get out of here. York is a great roast master. York has the stage presence of Norm Macdonald, the delivery of Norm Macdonald, and the face of a 90s school shooter. Dan has shown me how tolerant people have become because Dan talks about his Tourette's all the time and nobody seems to care. <laughs> people say Dan Cern is a lot like Jesus. I hope so because Jesus died at 33. <laughs> Joseph is like a transsexual athlete. He unfairly beats women. It's always inspirational to see Kreper write jokes in his books because it serves as a reminder that he can read and write. <laughs> I'd rather be in a roast while sitting next to Kreper than be in a roast and be Kreper. <laughs> On to Helke Steinach. Helke is one of the greatest intellectuals I know when it comes to international politics and global relations. Too bad he's a shill for China. <laughs> Helgi stands out, but in a bad way. Like a Make America Great Again hat in a mosque in New Zealand. <laughs> Helgi Stanner likes to perform stand-up where nobody wants to go, like the Ukraine, the West Bank, his own stand-up shows. <laughs> Bill Burr was here and gave Helgi a nod, which is the highest possible praise you can get during a comedy show. Helgi was never famous enough to be washed up, which is a shame because he does the washed up part pretty well. <laughs> Helgi is a pretty controversial comedian. He's the only one brave enough to make fun of dead Icelandic Nazis and Russian homophobes. Really can't wait for your Netflix special. Just make sure to include that 30 minute geopolitical bit with the racist caricatures about the UN getting drunk. That bit never gets old, unlike children in Yemen. Thank you. Good. We have one more comedian before the man of the hour. This person, I normally, like I've been doing all night, I'd normally make an insult before the comedian came on stage, but I don't want to do that because I want his show to go well, and I know the only way it goes well is if he has a foreign comedian to prop him up and give him compliments. Please give it up for Hulu Jackson. I'm the best thing to happen to Helge Steiner since Bill Burr. I, I, I didn't even, like, I, thought, uh, I was supposed to do this roast. I didn't write it really. I wrote it on a napkin. And, uh, yeah, and then I wiped my ass on that napkin because I didn't have toilet paper. And then I posted that napkin on Facebook and got 14,000 likes. Because I, I, really, I, I really don't know how to roast these people that are here because I don't really know them. I, I don't really socialize with uh, civilians, uh, with, uh, 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 with, with, uh, um, uh, which is my word for unsuccessful. I'm so sorry. So sorry that my badly crude drawn poop jokes make more money than you do. And uh, Snjolag, this is my joke about Snjolag. Ha ha, you're different from us. You have a vagina. <laughs> I'm really not putting any effort in this. Uh, <laughs> and yes, uh, who, who did, uh, did I forget? Oh, so, uh, yeah, but, uh, <clears throat> uh, just before I go to uh, our victim over here, uh, I want to let's give it up for uh, our host, York. 
With a host that is impossible to roast because the, he has got his shit together. There's nothing wrong with that guy at all. <laughs> I, I, I don't really, I really don't want to make fun of you in front of your girlfriend, August Bent. But, uh, <laughs> but yes, this is Helgi. Did I forget about that? No, oh, yeah, I did do it, I did do it. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, Helgi. I remember the first time I met you. Uh, uh, no, I don't. But uh, <laughs> I remember at least the fourth or fifth time I met you when you asked me to come with you to China. You put your hands on my shoulders and like, hey, let's go to China. It's like anything to get your fucking hands off me. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and then it happened. And then when we went to China together and those were probably, I'm being serious right now, they were probably my best days, a few of the best days of my life, really. It was a great, great moment. I, I really needed someone to order the things off the menu because we didn't understand anything. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, that wasn't a joke, really. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, and it's and also like, it's so fascinating to see you speak Chinese. You can actually speak Chinese. You do stand up in Chinese. When, when, when we were in China, I wish we had seen you uh, I wish I'd ever uh, I'd seen you do uh, stand up in Chinese because then I wouldn't have understood anything you said and uh, that would be so much more funny. But, uh, but uh, I really do. Uh, but uh, he is a cosmopolitan guy. But I know him as a social justice warrior. He is a warrior for free speech because this is what happened. One day, I woke up on a Sunday. And I had the message that he had sent me in the middle of the night. And he says, do you believe the stories people are telling about me? And I'm like, oh my god, has Helgi still been me too? And, and I went, I went to, I went to uh, uh, Dieva of Pontoris, didn't see anything. I was like, of course, he's not famous enough to be on I went to his, uh, uh, his Facebook page and I saw a screenshot. So what had happened is this, uh, he had been on this very stage and he had told a joke about uh, gays and uh, it was construed uh, as a homophobic joke uh, from one of the audience members. This audience member actually posted a thing about him on the internet and said something like, the, oh, like a cisgender motherfucker is telling jokes about us gays and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, actually she was, uh, uh, or he, I don't know, uh, she was uh, <laughs> accusing him of being uh, homophobic. And uh, now I, I, I looked at the joke and I know this, this joke, the problem with this joke is not that it's homophobic, it's just pretty <laughs> fucking lame. But, uh, I, <laughs> But, uh, uh, but, it was, uh, but I didn't think it was homophobic at all, and I told him, yeah, okay, don't do anything about it, but yeah, no, but she put it on the internet, and it got like 37 likes. <laughs> there are 37 people out there who think I am a homophobe. <laughs> and I'm uh, like, no, no, but it really, it really doesn't matter. Just, uh, she already, or he, uh, uh, erased it. <laughs> and, and uh, so it, it, it doesn't matter, just ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. He's like, yeah, but you know, you know, people are gonna think bad things about me. No, just ignore the motherfucker, really. Just, just ignore him. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, yeah, 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 it's not a big thing. No, it's not a big thing. Just, just do, it. Go do your, like, never apologize. Never apologize for your own jokes. And he said, no, I won't. Next day, he sent a, he did a, a whole article on <laughs> the internet about how uh, he he was being uh, he was being uh, misconstrued as a homophobic motherfucker on the internet, and then sick like a, a like a, a lot more people thought he was homophobic. <laughs> At least uh, sixty three people <laughs> think now that he is a homophobe, which is like half the people that's in here right now. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I thought, no, hey, 
You're not a homophobe. You're just a kind motherfucker. And I do love you. And I don't have an ending to that joke. <laughs> what I do want to say is, uh, I've have, uh, I was uh, here uh, uh, a year ago, and uh, now I was uh, yeah I've been I've been watching these guys for a while uh, that have been before me, and they have been killing it tonight. They have been up. I'm, I'm not. I'm being serious. They have been killing it. Because I really, I really didn't put any work into this. And this, I, 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 and I went to this thing today and I thought like, oh, this is gonna be easy. Because last time I saw these guys, they sucked. <laughs> but then I've been watching them one after another and they have been beautiful and this club has been motherfucking awesome. Yeah! So, just, so my mistake tonight was just to not have any faith in you guys. <laughs> uh, when we were hanging with you in uh, in China, you we had a, like a private conversation, which I'm gonna tell everyone about now. <laughs> and uh, it was like uh, like uh, uh, you were telling us about like your hardship in your childhood uh, and. Uh, as a child, and I remember looking into Snow Lux's eyes and going like, I know it. <laughs> and, uh, but also, that's what makes a comedian. But the thing is, I feel like you have to make more fun of yourself. And I feel like after this night, you have way too much material. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna be fucking all right. I'm really happy to know you. I always, when I bring my friends over here, and when you start, you, I say, hey, check out this guy. He can do, he can do like 12 accents in two minutes. <laughs> so give it up for Helgi Steiner. I do love this guy. <laughs> and I think I have everything. OK, bye. <laughs> Keep it going for Huli. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Huli, for the kind words. That was really wonderful. He, he gave us all compliments. He's so brave and wonderful and a great mentor in the comedy business. He waited until the club was successful before he showed up. <laughs> Thank you for all the hard work you put into the scene and not just showing up once it's well. Yes. What a guy. It's now time for the final man. You know, the man of the hour. Helgi Steiner, I don't know if you've heard a lot about him. He's a wonderful guy. This is very strange, because normally if I'm here, I go on last and you get to go on if I don't show up. <laughs> but this is good. We get compared a lot, you and I. That's kind of fun. You know, it's kind of good. I feel kind of like we have like that, you know, twins thing going on. <laughs> Plus a little bit of Dorian Gray, like he's my, he's my pitcher that I have in the attic. And I just go out and get fucked up and eat whatever I want. And I'm just like, oh, okay, I just look like this piece of shit. But he takes it all on him. He's good. But I want you guys to know that after this, after he does his show, that he might actually be joining My Voices Have Tourette's. <laughs> which is good because they, they're getting kind of lax on what, you know, constitutes mental illness and things like that. So now they've included desperation. <laughs> which is good. And uncontrollable sweating. But before, because you're going to be the one who closes this and ends the night, I would like to say, this is, this is a surprisingly wonderful night. And it's Woo! wonderful that you put this together and were brave enough to do this, because I would not do this. <laughs> they told me they were recording this. I'm like, if you live stream this, I'm out of the country. <laughs> so thanks for just recording it. <laughs> but really, you've, uh, thanks for putting this together. And we're all here for one reason, because we wanted to make it a success. And we hope we did a good job for you. But here, come up to the top. Woo! All right, you motherfuckers. Uh, I thought you were my friends. <laughs> no, no, you guys had fun tonight? <laughs> All right, let me, let me do that in my voice, apparently. Have you guys had fun tonight? <laughs> yeah! This was a great night, wasn't it? Oh, hey, come on, come on. Give it up for the Roastmaster York Underwood, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Canada's answer to Charlie Sheen. 
No, I was actually really thrilled when York agreed to be tonight's Roastmaster, and I was actually even more thrilled when he didn't cancel on me five minutes before it started. <laughs> Man, this is great. No, the thing is, York, he's actually, he's been a really busy man as of late. Uh, he's been working uh, recently on his book uh, and as well his marriage. Although it's, a, although it's a bit of a toss up as to which one will end soon. Uh, actually, to be, a lot of people think that at some point his wife will just tell him to, you know, get bent, but I, I think he's more likely to come inside of him. Uh, uh, oh, hey, speaking of cum shots, uh, Snowla Lulix just left the building, didn't she? Uh, she had to go pretend to do a show. Uh, no, it was, she was great, wasn't she tonight? She was awesome! Hey! Oh, it was insane! I, I haven't seen a blonde chick do comedy like that since the leather special. That was amazing! Thanks for taking that view. <laughs> no, no, Snowla Lulix, or uh, Sola, as she's known by her fan. Um, <laughs> I would say she's without a doubt one of the greatest uh, comedy writers in Iceland. Uh, she's one of the greatest female comedians in Iceland. A title she received by being one of the three female comics that didn't leave the country. Uh, I've actually also said that Snjola is uh, one of my favorite comedy writers in the country since uh, all of her six jokes have never failed to make me laugh. Uh, Snjola was actually, she was actually one of the funny thing, she was actually one of the comics I brought along with me to China. And uh, while we were in Shanghai, one of the uh, Chinese people we met on the streets uh, said that actually she reminded him a lot of Celine Dion. On, which actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, they do kind of look alike. They both speak French, and uh, their biggest hits usually end up being stuck on replay for five years. <laughs> of course, uh, I couldn't talk about China without mentioning my other China companion, Hu Le Gutai Son! Ah, give it up for Hu Le Gutai Son! Yeah, I, I, I took Hu Le Son with me to China in the hopes of using comedy to uh, further the friendship between China and the West. Uh, and then, of course, the Chinese government saw Hula's artwork, and now 13 foreigners have so far been put on death row. <laughs> uh, now, if you know Hula's uh, comedy, uh, you'll know he thoroughly enjoys poop jokes. Isn't that right? Yeah. It's not just because he goes to Germany every year. Um, it's, uh, it's also because, as an artist, his own poop is the only thing he's ever successfully copyrighted. <laughs> Uh, but really, you, you, you're like me, like you travel, right? You did a, you recently did a tour of Eastern Europe, right? You did like Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, like all those countries, and it's actually really sad what happened to all those countries back in the 90s, you know, with the wars and everything, but uh, it was quite nice of Huli to go over there and, you know, show those people what bombing really looks like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, hey, hey, come on. Speaking of foreign policy disasters, we have our token American Joe right here. Yeah! Seriously, uh, God to honest, what truth, what can you say about Joseph N. Sickle that hasn't already been said in police testimonies by crying hostile employees the world over? <laughs> like, I'll admit, man, roasting this guy is not easy. It's like, it's like trying to burn a building that voluntarily sets itself on fire four times a day. And look, as Joseph has said, you know, there, there are good Americans and then there's the bad Americans, right? The good ones, they always travel abroad and... And Joseph, he's one of the good Americans, you know, the one that moves abroad and, and then he immerses himself into the local culture instead of demanding that everyone else accommodate his deeds just because he's American. <laughs> I mean, look, let, let, let's say Joseph, like, moves to Kazakhstan or something. I mean, you, you'll never hear Joseph have this conversation in his head before, right? Hey, Joseph, what you think about getting into this weekend? <laughs> oh, shit, brother, I found me this whole bar in Kazakhstan that serves chicken wings and has the Yankees game. <laughs> Oh shit, man, let me get in on that. You know I only enjoy stuff that originates in my home country and doesn't require me to learn anybody else's language. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm most interested in? Getting in there, picking one of them little Kazakh brains, seeing how their society handles drunken, rambling Facebook posts at 3 a.m. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother, let's go burn bridges again. <laughs> Uh, now, of course, moving across the pond, we don't always need to rely on America to make us great again, right? We have Hugh Coverdell Jones. He's proof of that. He was our uh, token British comedian. Uh, he's on loan to us from the UK to remind us that Brexit is not the most depressing thing to come out of that country in the last decade. Uh, now, I can't even really call you British anymore, right? I mean, you, you abandoned your country and now have an Irish passport, you fucking weasel. Uh, no, I promise you, within a year or two, we'll probably start working for the IRA. You know, it's funny, you know, whereas Russia trained a whale to spy on the West for them, the IRA will rely on a depressed hamster with a cheery voice of a suicide note. <laughs> Uh, but of course, I don't want to focus just on uh, Hugh's depression, because we only have an hour and a half for this shit. Uh, <laughs> obviously, the thing is, uh, we, we couldn't talk about mental health 
Uh, of course, without mentioning Graper. Um, <laughs> Now, I think he's uh, great for, he, he's been in the program for about four years now, and uh, we're all very, very proud of him. Uh, yes, every, every night, uh, Graper goes on stage and reads from his little book where he uh, has macaroni glued all of his jokes together with a leftover paste that he didn't eat. <laughs> Graper is, the thing is, Graper, he's not just the living embodiment of a short bus whose high point in comedy was having Bill Burr make fun of his laugh. He's also an inspiration to mentally challenged comedians around the world. <laughs> And also proof that Iceland is still four decades away from growing up when it comes to racism. <laughs> and of course, on the subject of racism, <laughs> Jatni Thomas! Hey! Oh man, you, yeah, you, you may know Bjarni from his internet trolling and vanilla ice cover songs. Jesus Christ, man, you really are a work of art. I mean, look at you, you're, you're, you're frail, you got more facial hair than a monkey, and you dress like you came from 1983. You're like AIDS, you're like AIDS with a Twitter ban. <laughs> yes, Bjarne has frequently been banned from both Facebook and Twitter for inflammatory comments about the government. So I give it about 10 years before Netflix starts airing a documentary about the Icelandic domestic terrorist, you know, the ginger bomber. <laughs> Speaking of ginger, Arthur Dali, you still here, buddy? Yes. Yeah! Woo! Arthur, yeah, I love you, man. It's sad to not be able to have you on tonight. Uh, Arthur Dali, as people have been saying tonight, he frequently says that, you know, some people have said that it reminds him of Chris Farley. Uh, to be honest, I actually just think that, well, yeah, he says that he has the body of Chris Farley, but he actually also has the haircut of Eric Stoltz from the movie Mask, so. <laughs> uh, uh, now, of course, I also invited my good friend Gisela Johan here tonight. Uh, who also happens to be my favorite comedian in the city. That shit ain't getting old. Uh, now every night Gisli is hosting, he goes on stage and says that every single comedian is his favorite comedian in the city. Uh, now the funny thing is, it's, it's actually not a bit, it's just 15 years of drug use finally kicking in. Uh, but the thing is, Gisli's actually stone sober now. And uh, the thing is, my fear is that uh, he'll, you know, change from being friendly and funny and will become boring, repetitive, and impossible to be around. You know, kind of like the Monday nights at Goykuren. And of course, who could forget the secret seller's very own Hannah Gatsby, Danette. Uh, <laughs> yes, insp inspired by Sean Penn, Dan Zarin quickly realized the ultimate shortcut to success, pretending to be retarded. <laughs> Dan actually runs a weekly charity show called My Voices Have Tourette's, and like most legitimate charities, they sell merchandise. Uh, they, uh, they have their very own line of t-shirts, hats, and, you know, for the diehard fans, Kool-Aid. Uh, Dan, Dan also recently came out as bisexual, right? Yeah. Or, uh, or as people in the bisexual Tourette's community prefer to be called, um, attention whores. <laughs> The uh, thing is, of course, we couldn't mention Dan without mentioning his sidekick, Thoradlip, and my good friend. The uh, thing is, uh, Dan and Thoradlip, they've actually become sort of a Bert and Ernie duo, you know, two unfunny puppets entertaining simpletons by pretending to be gay. Uh, well, of course, of course, uh, Thoradlip, he's actually, he's actually a part of that whole bandwagon of circus freaks that Dan runs. Uh, I mean, he doesn't have Tourette's, although he stammers twice as much. <laughs> Now the thing is, uh, Thoda, he actually has anxiety, which actually makes sense. I mean, I would probably be anxious myself if I was 36 years old and my biggest career achievement had last taken place when Iceland Express was still an airline. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. As every single person here is set tonight, Thoda the one funniest man in Iceland in 2007, which means that any girl that was born that year, thought of it, is now only six years away from legally having you as a rock bottom. <laughs> you know, everybody, uh, four years ago on this very month, uh, I just got back from China where I began performing stand-up and I wanted to know if Iceland also had a scene as well. So I did some looking around, uh, and I found this recently formed group called Golden Gang. And within one day, I messaged Gisli, and I was on the lineup to perform my first set in Iceland. 
Uh, I'll never forget that night. I walked into Great Britain just as the show was about to begin, and the first thing I saw was a comedian named Rakvi showing his bare naked asshole to the entire crowd of stone silent people. And I thought to myself, what the fuck is this? But no, you know what? I actually ended up having a great time, and some of the people that are on this stage here tonight, uh, they are actually, have become not only comedian friends to me, but also lifelong friends. Uh, so, you know, as I turn 30 years of age, I realized that at this point, I may not have a wife, I may not have kids or a mortgage or, you know, a plan for life. Uh, <laughs> but I do have a great group of friends who I can always rely on. And uh, they, they say you only roast the ones you love, and uh, that tonight couldn't really be any further from the truth. So, guys, <laughs> just remember, I love you all, and go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. You've been amazing. Okay. So this is an English language comedy club. So we're gonna sing happy birthday to Mr. What? We get, we get don't, don't you remember his name? No. <laughs> no, Mr. Uh, no. Helgi Stainer, please a round of applause for all the comedians who perform tonight. And if you want to hear all these jokes again, we're doing another show at 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's true. This went a little long. But everybody, big happy birthday to Helge Stainer. Let's go one, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday Helge Stainer.